Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take a hot topic, and this one says, but Harcourt, Kaduna, Worry refineries may not get enough crude oil. Joining us to have a conversation is Dr. Law Mefo. He's a political scientist. Good morning, doctor. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good, good morning. Uh, well, uh, a quick one. I am a social scientist. Oh. A social scientist. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Social scientists yeah. will put that down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A, a, a public intellectual and uh, a policy analyst. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think that summarizes it. So. <laughs> Just to keep the record straight. You know? Okay. So, social scientists, we got it. All right, so we have yeah. this, um, this statement that is quite alarming because for an oil-producing nation, you would expect that we have enough crude coming in. Now, we're hearing that even when these refineries come up to speed, we might not have enough crude for them to just have production. What do you think about this and what might be the challenges why Wari, Kaduna, and Potakot refineries might not be just getting the crude that they need at this point? Yeah, oh, well, it's um, alarming, no doubt, but um, it has been long in coming uh, because uh, in the last uh, presidency of um, Jeremy Ahmad Buhari, a lot went uh, uh, on uh, um, behind uh, the scene. Mm. Many uh, policies that have brought us to where we are you know, were really um, carelessly executed then, fully thought through, and um, what you are reviewing this morning is just one of them. What uh, the uh, Buhari presidency did was to mortgage future production of oil, of food oil. Mortgaging, I mean, future production, what you're going to produce in the months and uh, perhaps years to, years to come, um, has uh, been uh, mortgaged by the past uh, administration. And they mortgaged it as um, a kind of collateral for loans and other commitments. In other words, the crude that you produce today, which is uh, uh, still uh, hovering around um, uh, around uh, one uh, uh, one uh, one point five million um, uh, barrels a day, um, much of that cannot be utilized by Nigeria because we have already used the future production of crude to get certain uh, commitments, get loans and uh, all that. So that is one level of the problem. The other aspect of the problem is what you call the oil theft. I keep uh, saying that uh, this is not oil theft. Nobody is stealing anything. They know those who are taking a uh, oil illegally away from Nigeria. Um, oil bunkering, oil bunkering is a, appears to be officially sanctioned in Nigeria. So those who control the sector, know the people they give um, uh, crude for reasons not known to Nigerians. Yeah. And that, has, that uh, is uh, what has uh, come up to be known as uh, oil theft. Um, I recall that um, shortly after taking office, the National Security Advisor, uh, Ribad, told us that um, between 400 and um, 500,000 uh, barrels of uh, crude uh, was uh, going um, away through the oil theft. But the question is, who are the thieves? And uh, um, if you understand how this uh, really works, you would see that um, uh, without official collusion, without official um, approval and access, to the uh, nation's uh, um, continental shelves and waters. It's, it's uh, practically impossible for any vessel to enter Nigeria, load and leave. It's not simply possible. Some of these uh, vessels that are um, used in conveying the crude, they carry um, so much that would they take a week to two to load, to fully load. Mm. And you load um, within Nigerian waters. And um, nobody can tell me that um, such a vessels, such a huge uh, ships that would dock in uh, our waters and they load the crude and leave, it uh, can happen without um, the uh, maritime security uh, being aware of it. In other words, if uh, 
if uh, they allow it and uh, and then um, it is a constituting what we call uh, oil theft then they, they simply do not want to uh, stop it and they don't want to tell nigerians who are the thieves and why they have allowed the, that to go on for so long remember that there was a time to follow who um of course uh, i don't know whether he is still uh, holding that contract of uh, maintaining a, um, a maritime uh, security especially the pipe uh, um the oil uh, pipe uh, lines he, he showed nigerians he showed nigerians illegal uh, illegal pipes through which uh, through which a uh, crude was being siphoned from uh, from nigeria and um the matter uh, raised the, the dust as usual and they quietened down, died off. Nobody knows anything about that anymore. And Topolo himself uh, uh, has kept quiet for the, the reasons best known to him. The point I'm making is that these uh, two factors have, have a com a combined, combined to form the, the, the headwinds that we are confronted with at the moment. So if you hear that Port Harcourt and other refineries will not get enough crude, it's because we can't produce enough, and not that we are not producing enough, but because what you produce, a significant percentage of that is already taken away in advance by the Buhari administration. Mm -hmm. And a significant uh, quantity also is going into private uh, uh, channels and pockets, and nobody is stopping it. Uh, don't forget, that um, uh, the alarm raised by um, the statement uh, concerning the uh, potato refineries and others, it was earlier raised even by the Dangote refinery. If you recall, the Dangote refinery entered into an agreement with um, the U.S. to supply Dangote refinery um, crude. It, is it not uh, absurd that uh, Dangote will have to go to the U.S. to buy crude and refine in Nigeria, an oil uh, producing country, is because of the way and manner the Buhari presidency handled Nigeria. It's terrible, but that, that's, that's the summary of what has happened. And um, the way out, the way out for me is, um, it, it, you know, the window is narrow, very, very uh, narrow, but it's still something, if well uh, explored, can the Office of the National Security Advisor stop the oil theft. If that is done, if that is done, it becomes uh, easier yeah? because uh, the, the 400 to 500,000 uh, 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 you know, uh, the barrels of a crude that goes into theft will now uh, be available for the local refiners. That is one level of it. And it takes only political will, like I said. You know, the, the ships come and they dock in Nigeria waters and load and leave. And they cannot, it's not possible for that to happen without a official approval and collusion. So what is required is political will. The president will have to step uh, up and into this. And, um, and they tell the people that are, that are being uh, serviced with uh, these uh, crude, that the enough is enough. They are taking enough and should allow Nigeria to breathe. Mm -hmm. If you take the president, take the office of the National Security Advisor to get this done, then another uh, measure that we must take is to increase, to do something to increase uh, our production rates. You know, we are not producing enough. If you check at the point, ECOWAS, uh, uh, sorry, OPEC gave uh, Nigeria uh, up to 2.3 million um, barrel of crude per day, but uh, we have not been able to uh, meet uh, that quota. We weren't able to meet that quota then. What that means is that we have a window to produce more, even officially, under the OPEC uh, regulation. And I tell you, in fact, it gets to a point where if uh, we need um much more uh, production of a crude to be able to survive as a country and the ECOWAS doesn't uh, sorry I keep talking about ECOWAS and OPEC okay. doesn't uh, permit yeah. we can we, we can exit we can exit OPEC. We wouldn't be the first and the last country to exit OPEC. We can. Of what value is OPEC to us really?
what the, what the organization is, is, is doing is they are doing to uh, sort of uh, regulate the, um, the, the, the price of a crude in the international market, which is good. But, you know, we cannot continue to play the, the, the good boy and um, we are suffering at home. Our economy is taking a hard hit, you know, seriously beating down. So something needs to be done about it. So I am recommending these uh, two critical um, policy shifts. You know, the, the needle must shift. If it doesn't shift, nothing will change. You need to stop the oil theft, go after those. If I even if you don't go after them, stop the stop the illegal uh, um, sales of a crude. Stop that. It can be stopped. I believe Nigeria has the capacity to do so. And the, 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 the head of the Navy, the, the chief of Naval staff, um, uh, uh, Admiral uh, um, Ikechuku Ogala, we have to really step up. He has to do something because overall, uh, maritime security of Nigeria is uh, within the Navy. And um, every other um, maritime um, security agency is just there they helping out so the overall the overall should be the nigerian navy because the, what is happening is a threat to national security so mm. the office of the, the office of the, the the chief of naval staff himself will have to understand that if the theft is still going on uh, nearly a year after he took up office uh, then uh, we will begin to ask uh, questions. Is, is he keeping quiet because the people there, people involved, are too uh, important uh, to be touched? Mm. If, 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 if that is the case, if that is the case, Nigerians need to know who are really these people. Because there is no way you can load a vessel in Nigerian waters without the Navy being aware of it. Mm. That's my point. But I stand to be corrected. You know, you can't enter. It, because you know the continental shelf, it, the, the portion of the of the of the, the oceans and others that constitute Nigerian territory, they and it is known, it's, it's clear. So and and the the the, the naval uh, flags, you know what you call the Western flag, the Eastern flag, and so on. They are flags because they are they are on the watch out for trespassers. People cannot enter the Nigerian waters without the Clearance. So how do these uh, ships, these vessels, enter Nigerian waters to load the crude? Some of the of the vessels are so heavy that it will take up to two weeks to load them. And within the two weeks, you didn't see them coming, you didn't see them load, mm -hmm. you didn't see them leave. No, no, no. It Which leads to my next question. Um, that leads to my next question because, I mean, you've spoke extensively on oil theft. And you've said, yeah. you know, they load these vessels, right? And you can't load a vessel on Nigerian waters without having, you know, the approval or certain documentation that is needed for you to move. So my That's question now is, is this hinged on corruption? Do you think, obviously, um, these people, they know what's going on, but they, they decide to just turn a blind eye to it just because maybe some of them, um, they're profiting from this oil theft. There is no doubt. That's, a, that's precisely my point. Better yeah. made by you, even. Yeah. You see, there is official collusion. Official collusion is going on. There is no doubt about that. Because you just you just said it. You know that you you can't come in without a uh, documentation. Yes. There must be approval that you will show the you will show the uh, the naval and security uh, channels before you are allowed passage into Nigerian waters. This is very basic, very, very simple. And the, you know, these people come and go, and we attribute their activities to oil theft. The question is, why are we calling it oil theft when we know those who are taking the oil away? <laughs> That's the issue here. So it is, for me, it's not theft. The, uh, what, what the whole thing is, is that Nigerian oil production and sales you know, have um, the quantity that constitutes uh, what you call the official uh, sales, and you have unofficial sales. This is what this whole thing is all about. Don't forget, Nigerian Brent, that is what it is called. It has a DNA that is known all over the world. So even if you take this oil away, Nigeria can still trace the, 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 the Brent, the Nigerian Brent, anywhere in the world 
and find those who took to get the oil there if it is not uh, what was officially supplied by the NMPC. This is not okay science. That is why I say that there is very serious official collusion because there is no other explanation for it. No other explanation. Tom Polo showed us the pipes. He did. We saw the pipes, very huge pipes, almost as huge as the official pipe, you know, he used to siphon um, uh, crude from, from, from Nigeria. And then uh, you can see that unless you stop that, our daily production uh, we, will not uh, increase officially. Because Nigeria, as we speak now, may be, may be um, a, a producing well over 2 million barrels. But what is officially captured is less than 1.5 million. So the balance is going to people who we don't know up to now. We don't know who they are. And officially, nobody seems to be saying anything about them. We only hear that there is oil theft. Mm. From the National Security Advisor, Rebani, whose job it is to stop it. It is so. He should find a way of knowing who these people are and then frighten them off. He can. That's why his office is uh, there for. If he cannot do it within Nigeria, he can, uh, he can bring in a uh, international forensic experts mm. yes to to, to 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 monitor what is going on on our uh, in on our waters of course yes his office has the capacity and the funding to do that can bring in people from outside nigeria from israel from they, they, within one week they will tell you what's going on mm. so if they don't want to do this they have other reasons why they don't want to take this part of honor so and then uh, don't forget i have already told you that a significant percentage of even the little we produce is already mortgaged, already sold in advance. Mm. Let me put it that way, so that it can be better understood. The Buhari presidency gave away a percentage of future crude production of Nigeria. He gave it away and used it to take loan, loans from everywhere. Apart from, apart from the 23 trillion uh, Naira, Naira ways and means that they printed uh, 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 with, the, with the central bank, with the central bank. Mm. You know, so we need to we need to put we need to put all these things in perspective and understand that what is going on, what is going on. There is no political will to deal with it. There is no political will. I, I don't want to delve into the kind of uh, loans that uh, Buhari took by mortgaging future oil production in Nigeria. I don't want to go into that. That's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, the National Assembly, the Senate particularly, is proving the, the 30 trillion uh, uh, ways and means. Uh, uh, that this money just printed like that, without any backing, without any authorization by the National Assembly. That was the level of recklessness. Recklessness. You know, Nigeria was on a free fall under Bugari. Unfortunately so. He just left the country to the Kaaba that ran it. And they, they maybe because of his health and things like that. But these people didn't treat Nigeria well at all. And that is what we are suffering now. That was what led to the Naira flotation and the, the first subsidy removal. That has now unleashed the double, uh, the double headwinds, you know, that have crippled the nation's economy. Everybody is suffering, got access fuel, got access light, you can't access anything. That's the problem. And uh, right. I keep talking about the political will. The political will is that Tinubu himself will have to, he has to roll up the sleeves, bear his tanks, mm. and drive these people out of the process. Okay, he sir. has to drive them away. Sadly, we've run out of that time. Was Yes, we have to go. But obviously, I, I get what you're saying. And this has an effect yeah. on our economy. But we've just run out of time. And we want to say thank you for coming and just, um, you know, just bringing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much. Yeah, the pleasure is always mine. Thank you. Have a blessed day, Nigerians. Yes, you too, sir. Thank you so much. All right, we've been speaking with Dr. Law Mefo. He's a social scientist, and we're talking about the fact that Port Harcourt, Kaduna, and Wari refineries may not get enough crude oil. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.